move on to the mechanism of electrolysis. Okay. Before that, there is one small difference that we need to know that that would be electrolytic dissociation. and ionization. Okay. After that, we will move into the mechanism. Electrolytic dissociation. See, when do you break a thing? It is already intact. It is already present. Okay. So, here what we are doing is, it is only separation of ions that is happening here. For example, if you take lead bromide, it will break down into lead ions and bromide ions. So, it is already present as ions and we are just breaking it. But ionization means to form ions. Okay? So, this is formation of ions, which means ions are not present but we are going to form ions. For example, hydrochloric acid would break down into hydrogen ion and chloride ion. This happens in the presence of water and this is a covalent compound. So, this happens for covalent compounds. When they get ionized, we call it as ionization. This would be for electrovalent compounds or ionic compounds. Okay. Now, moving on to the mechanism of electrolysis. Now, we are going into the actual what is actually happening in electrolysis. If we see there, the first thing that happens is all cations what are cations? Positively charged. Okay? So, cations which means metals, hydrogen ion, these will migrate to cathode. This is the first point that we must remember. All these will always go only to the cathode because cathode is negatively charged. Because they go to the cathode, these are also called electropositive elements. So, all electropositive elements migrate to cathode. All right. Now, go moving on to this, all anions that means non-metals would migrate to anode. And when they migrate to anode, that means they are electronegative elements. Okay. The next one, see there is always a, one is losing electron, one is gaining electron. So, the number of electrons gained should be always equal to the number of electrons lost. Okay. The last one, the most important one is that this electrolysis is a redox reaction. What do you mean by redox reaction? Reduction and oxidation happening simultaneously. Okay. Reduction and oxidation when they happen simultaneously side by side. Okay. One side one element would get reduced and the other one would get oxidized. Both are happening side by side that is called a redox reaction. Why it is a redox reaction? Okay. Now, let us take at the cathode what happens? cathode is negative, cations come to this cathode. 
okay so that means what it is cations example let us take sodium ion this would gain one electron to become a neutral atom so what is it undergoing reduction all right next let's take anode anode anions would come to anode like for example chloride ion this would lose electron to form chloride atom that is cl2 and this is oxidation so both these things happen simultaneously it's not like only sodium or only chloride but both happen simultaneously so electrolysis is a redox reaction okay next we go to the conditions for electrolysis let us recollect the definition of electrolysis it said that it has to be the chemical compound has to be either in the aqueous state that is in the presence of water or in the molten state so here we are going to have an experiment to show that it can conduct only in these two states and not in the solid state this is nothing but sodium chloride so we have just taken sodium chloride in three different crucibles one is in the solid state one to one we have added water and made it into a solution and this one is melted down that is it's in the molten state okay so this has all the molten state of nacl here when we go to the solid state all these three the circuit is fitted like this you have a bulb that is there and connected to a battery this one alone there is no glow okay so in the solid state the bulb does not glow which means current is not passing why it isn't passing through because these ionic compounds are bonded by strong electrostatic forces of attraction okay so by itself it is not able to release itself and for conduction we need free ions will it have free ions no because it's bonded by that strong forces of attraction there are no free ions that is why there is no glow there is no conduction next we move on to the molten state when we come to the molten state it is heated so even though there is a strong bonding due to the presence of heat the ions they break down and they become mobile and once they break down and become mobile just like students when you are let loose when the bell rings and you just run out what happens you will start becoming free right so like that this becomes mobile so it is free ions and what is that energy due to that movement called kinetic energy so these ions they gain kinetic energy and they become free that's how this molten state the bulb glows now we move on to the aqueous state when we come to the aqueous state the reason for the glow is nothing but water the presence of water water is a polar covalent compound what do you mean by polar covalent compound it has polarity though it is a covalent compound with no ions there are charges that are developed because this is slightly pulling all the electrons to itself and becomes electronegative 
Now when there is charges in this water, what happens is when sodium chloride is dropped into the water, see like this when sodium chloride is added to the water, what happens? This positively charged hydrogen will pull the chloride that is negative and the negatively charged oxygen will, would pull the sodium that is positive. So, thereby it releases these two into sodium ions and chloride ions. So, that is so therefore for electrolysis to happen in a nice way and to be successful we need that either to be in the molten state or in the aqueous state and never in the solid state. Sometimes covalent compounds if we take covalent compounds mainly there are two things hydrochloric acid and ammonia these two they do they are non electrolytes they do not conduct at all but when water is added so if hcl adds on or water adds on to hcl it becomes hydronium ion and chloride ion so they do ionize and then they become very good electrolytes same thing happens with ammonia when it reacts with water you get ammonium hydroxide which breaks down to ammonium ion and hydroxyl ion now these two which are non electrolytes basically but when water is added they become good electrolytes so this happens for these covalent compounds but other than that in the solid state no conduction in the molten state there is conduction in the aqueous state also there is conduction Now we move on to the last difference that is between metallic conduction and electrolytic conduction. Okay? Now this is a simple diagram that shows you the difference between metallic conduction and electrolytic conduction. Here also the bulb glows, here also the bulb glows. Both places have the battery but the difference being this is a solid metal and these are this is a liquid or maybe in the molten state. Okay, coming to the key points here, as we see here, it has ions. Okay, so the electrolytic conduction happens by flow of ions, whereas in metallic conduction, it is flow of electrons. The free electrons will keep jumping like a wave like motion and that is how the conduction happens in the metallic conduction. Okay. When it flows like this, when you see a copper wire or a nichrome wire or an aluminium wire, you never see say after, a, after some time when it keeps on conducting say we have switched on the light for hours together and after that we do not see the wire melting at all. It is still in the solid state. So this conducts in solid state only in the solid state whereas just now we saw in the previous experiment that electrolysis will happen only in aqueous state or molten state ok now when it happens in the solid state even for 6 months or 6 years or 60 years we do not have we never have an experience of changing the wire unless it is cut off or something happens the wire does not decompose ok so there is no decomposition but when you come to electrolytic there is decomposition so when it breaks down there is no decomposition so no new products whereas when there is decomposition 
there are new products that are formed. For example, if we are taking sodium chloride here, sodium chloride is a compound that we have taken, added water and electrolytic conduction happens. By the end of electrolysis, we get sodium metal separately. So, it is a new product that is formed. So, when these things happen, that means there is no exchange or no change of matter, then this becomes a physical change which can happen over and over again, whereas this is a chemical change. Okay. So, these are the basic differences that we need to know in electrolysis and now we can in the next video we will move on to the electrochemical series. Now we move on to a series called electrochemical series. You would have you are familiar with reactivity series. Okay. This is similar to that and if you see the order it is almost the same as the reactivity series of metals. Only difference here is we all we have it in the ionic form, we have it for cations and we also have it for anions which we, we have not learnt earlier. Now when we see this the ease with which it can ionize as we come down it actually becomes easier. In this electrochemical series what happens is the lower the element it is easier to get discharge. That means these are all highly ionizable as we come down it takes time but the lower the element in this series it is easier for it to be discharged as neutral atoms. Okay. Similarly, if you have for anions also it is the same thing the lower the position it is easier to discharge. So, for example, if you have a mixture of say potassium ions are there, aluminium ions are there and copper ions. If you have a mixture of all the three they will all move towards remember these are cations which will move towards the cathode. Now, it is like a running race all the three are going to the, there, but which one is going to be discharged? Okay, that is called as preferential discharge or selective discharge of ions. There may be many ions, but we need to know which one will be discharged and we have some factors based on which they will be discharged. Just like when you have a running race, who comes first? Naturally the person who runs fast, but not only really runs fast, but when it is a long uh, race say 1000 meters, then the person who is steady and who also knows how to keep up the pace and also has stamina. So, there are so many factors that are involved in that. Similarly, here also we have three factors in fact which we can touch upon. The first one, first factor is position in the electrochemical series. So, the position that it holds in the electrochemical series is very important. Lower the position, easier the discharge. Okay, so, this we should remember. So, if we have no, supposing we take these anions, if we have sulphate and we also have hydroxyl ion, naturally this being lower, this will be easily discharged compared to sulphate. So, sulphate will be left in the electrolyte itself. So, that is the first one. Second one is concentration of ions. Sometimes, say supposing we are dealing with sodium chloride and we are extracting sodium. In what state it is, it is easily you can add water to give aqueous NaCl that means sodium chloride solution. So, here what happens you have NaCl breaking down into Na plus and Cl minus. 
water breaking down into H plus and OH minus. What are the ions present? You have sodium as well as hydrogen ion. Both of them will go towards the cathode. Now, which one actually according to the first factor, we would say that hydrogen because hydrogen is lower, sodium is on top. But when there, whenever there is a problem, there is a solution also, we can overcome that by increasing the concentration of sodium ions. So, when the concentration increases, automatically this hydrogen is just pushed off and sodium will start getting discharged. So, that is one way out of this problem. All right. The third one is nature of the electrodes. We saw that electrodes are of two types, anode and cathode. There are also one more type of classification based on the nature. Okay. Sometimes you say they are studious or they are dull. But sometimes you would say that they are very talkative or they are quiet. Here it is about the action. Here it can be active or it can be inert. What do you mean by inert electrode? As the word says, inert means inactive. Okay. So, in this case, whenever you have an inert electrode, it will not be attacked by the electrolyte. Okay? Does not react with the electrolyte. That is called an inert electrode. And example for this is platinum is an example. Graphite is an example. iron all these are inert electrodes okay so that is inert when you come to active electrodes they are active all the time so whenever these ions move towards that also they will be pushed off and these active electrodes will ionize and release their own ions their ions into the electrolyte. This is what happens with active electrodes. Example, in our 10th standard, we have three active electrodes that we need to remember. So, if you can remember the word can, okay, just can, then you can get through this. How do I say this? C stands for copper. A stands for silver and the Latin name you should not forget it is argentum or the formula is AG and N stands for nickel formula NI. So, when you put the first letters together you get C A N and you can remember the active electrodes. When you remember these first letters of C, copper, silver and nickel or the symbols, the first letters of the symbols of these elements, you can remember these electrodes and you will not forget the active electrodes.